Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and welcome to a new reading vlog. For the next couple of days, I am hoping to read the shortest books on my TBR. Why, you ask? There is no particular reason, I just wanted to do this because I have been having a really bad time in terms of reading this year. I haven't really found any new favorites of 2020. I've spoken a lot about this on different videos where I'm really struggling to find any sort of joy and enjoyment from reading given the circumstances of the world. Because I am finding it really difficult to read books physically as compared to audiobooks which I am flying through, I thought it would be a good idea to read the shortest books on my TBR because I feel like I could feel a little bit accomplished because they are so easy to finish compared to the longest books on my TBR. And I'm also just a fan of short books as well. For my last reading vlog, which was my Dark Academia reading vlog, I read five books Books and that took me two months to complete, but now I am trying to read this many books for this reading vlog. They're all less than 300 pages. We have a graphic novel, we have a novel, we have a screenplay, plays, and a nonfiction. So I'm hoping to read maybe two of these a day and I can finish this whole reading vlog by the end of the weekend. So clearly I did not listen to past me who said don't read more than five books for a reading vlog because now I'm trying to read seven books in a reading vlog. So the first thing that I want to read is the Inception screenplay. I really wanted to read the screenplay because I really enjoy reading screenplays of my favorite movies because you can study the way that different screenwriters compose their movies and I just think it's really interesting to study screenplays. I'm not out here trying to write a screenplay but I just like studying them. So I'm slowly but surely collecting some of my favorite films screenplays. So this is one of them and I'm hoping to read this first and you're gonna have to stick around for the rest of the video to see what else I'm going to read because I'm not gonna share my TBR at the beginning of this video. I need you to stick around. So now I'm going to try and read Inception and what is cool is that it has some drawings as well for the script and it also has some concept art for the movie and I am just really excited to dive back into the world of Inception and to learn more about this screenplay that Christopher Nolan spent years upon years writing because it is one of his most complex movies and it's one of my favorite movies of all time so I'm very excited to start this. I forgot to do, which I always forget to do, is explain the premise of the book I'm reading. And it is about a group of people who do Inception. Inception is when you go into someone's dream and you go deep into their subconscious to plant an idea or to extract a secret that is deep within their mind. And this particular Inception mission is very complicated because they are not just going into one dream, but they're going three layers into dreams. So they're going into a dream within a dream, within a dream in order to plant an idea in someone's mind. And it's the type of film that you have to watch over and over again in order to notice new details, find new information, and really dig deeper into the concept of the movie itself. I am 100 pages into the screenplay and we have not started the mission of Inception, but they are preparing for it. And it is just really cool to read this screenplay and see the movie play in my mind because I've seen it so many times. So it feels like I'm watching the movie in a very slow version because I'm reading it very slowly, but I am enjoying it so much. I am highlighting it, I'm annotating it to really study the script and I'm really enjoying it. I highly recommend that if you love film, that you get your favorite movie screenplay to study it and to really appreciate the craft of writing a movie because it's so complex. And I feel like it's a part of a film that not a lot of people appreciate, like the overall just writing aspect of creating a film. So I finished Inception and it was amazing. And I just had a lot of fun with it, especially looking at 
the concept art for the movie and just seeing the way that it's structured and the way that Christopher Nolan wrote this film and brought it to life onto the screen, I thought it was a really great screenplay. I feel like I'm a little bit partial to Little Women's screenplay because it had so many details and descriptions that weren't included in the movie. It was used kind of to bring these characters to life, to add depth to them, and I feel like we did not have that with Inception. I feel like if you're looking at an Inception, you don't really know too much about the characters and you aren't really connected to them because they do just feel like figments of your imagination or like people that you see in a dream that you don't really know. I don't know if that was Christopher Nolan's plan, but I feel like I connected more to the Little Women screenplay than I did with the Inception screenplay, but that's also two completely different movies. Little Women is full of emotions, and Inception is full of action and science and all that jazz. So I was going to start another play that is only about like 60 pages, but I do have to edit my video for this Sunday, so I'm going to do that and then hopefully I can start my next play because it's really short and I think I could finish it in one sitting like I did with Inception. So the next thing that I want to read is super tiny and I know I can finish it in one sitting, which I'm planning on doing, and it is An Inspector Calls by J.B. Priestley. And this was kindly gifted to me by Shannon, so thank Thank you so so much for your generosity and just your kindness and for thinking of me and this play was recommended to me by a bunch of people on instagram when i asked for play recommendations at the beginning of this year because i wanted to read one play a month and while i am not reading a play a month i feel like i'm still reading 12 plays this year so that's okay with me and this play is about a family where a girl has just died by suicide so an inspector comes and he interviews and interrogates the entire family and the whole family kind of has an involvement in the girl's death so a ton of people recommended this to me they said it would be right up my alley and i think it will be It is now Sunday and yesterday I did not do a lot of reading because I went hiking and I just did not have time to read anything. So I only have 10 pages left in The Inspector Calls and while it is an interesting play in the premise and the way that all these characters' secrets are revealed and the way that all of their secrets are related to this one woman's death, I'm not really connecting with it. I don't feel very invested in the story and maybe it's because this play Play is a little bit too short so I don't feel connected to the characters but I just don't feel that invested in it but I do have 10 pages left so now I'm going to go read outside and finish this and then move on to my next read. So I just finished An Inspector Calls and I don't really know what I would rate this because I tend to not really rate things anymore but I just wish that this play was lengthier so I can connect with the characters. And I'm not familiar with this type of edition of a play, but the back of this play outlines the novel in complete detail, spoilers and all. It like reveals the ending of the play. And I accidentally read that because I thought this would just tell me the synopsis of the play, but instead it told me every single detail and every single plot point of the play so I was not surprised or caught off guard reading this play because I read the back of the play unknowing of the fact that this whole entire paragraph basically ruins the element of surprise for this play. So I feel like that ruined the surprise that I would have if I read this play not knowing anything about it. So if you do get an edition of a play that is this type of style, do not read the back of it because it will tell you everything about the play. All in all, I'm not really sure how to feel about this play. It was enjoyable in the way that there were so many secrets that unfurled in such a quick amount of time. But then again, I knew that they were coming and I knew that all the plot twists were coming. So like, I don't know how to feel about it. So I did read it, 
it was enjoyable, but it wasn't my favorite play of all time. So the next thing that I'm going to read that is one of the shortest things on my physical TBR is a poetry collection. And this poetry collection is Dreamwork by Mary Oliver. And this was kindly gifted to me by Liam. So thank you so much for your generosity and your kindness. And I was interested in Mary Oliver because I recently restarted a new Tumblr blog just to go to as like in a form of an escape because there are no follower accounts and it's just a very quiet social media platform compared to what it was in like 2012 where everyone was very aggressive. So I enjoy the quietness of Tumblr now because it's mostly just photos and quotes. So I have noticed a lot of quotes from Mary Oliver's poetry shared on my dashboard. And every time I read snippets of her poems, I am completely awe-inspired by her writing style and her ability to evoke so many emotions from me in just a few short stanzas. So I wanted to get a poetry collection by her to dive into her poetry rather than just looking at it on Tumblr and this is probably going to be a very quick read and I'm very excited to get to it because I know a lot of people really enjoy Mary Oliver's poetry so I'm excited to finally read her work and also fall in love with it. So hopefully I like it more than I did with An Inspector Calls. Even though they're completely different, they are not comparable, it's just based on enjoyment. So hopefully I enjoy this a little bit more. This is completely unrelated to me reading, but I am distressed that my favorite ColourPop lipstick, Calypso, is discontinued. They don't have satin lipsticks anymore, and they were my favorite lipstick. They're like this not too glossy, not matte type of lipstick that lasted me all day. And I have been distressed that they discontinued this line because this is like my identity, my everyday lipstick, and this is finally running out. I am just distressed. I'm having a mini identity crisis because like, who am I without Calypso? But I just wanted to tell you about this very minuscule problem in my life, but I think about it way more than I like to admit. I just always think about this liquid lipstick that I love so, so much and the fact that they don't make it anymore. Who, who would I be without Calypso? I finished Mary Oliver's dream work and this is my first Mary Oliver work so I have nothing to compare it to but I never really know what to say about poetry collections I'm always like it's good it was good it didn't completely change my life and it didn't become one of my new favorite poetry collections but there were certain poems that I really enjoyed and I really connected to but overall I didn't feel particularly connected to or moved by the poetry and I don't have like anything else to add on to that so this is my third thing that I read for this vlog which is very exciting I love how I'm just like speeding through the shortest books on my TBR because I just don't want them to sit there for a long time because I can tend to avoid books for a lot of years so if they are particularly short and I know I can finish them in like a sitting or two I want to get onto that opportunity before I ignore them for years and years. The next thing I plan on reading is How to Be Parisian Wherever You Are, Love, Style, and Bad Habits by four French women who are friends with each other, which I think is really cute. And this is just a cute how-to coffee table type of book. I really enjoy reading non-fictions about different cities and the people who live there and how different their city culture is from my life. I just really enjoy getting glimpses into different cities and how people live there and how how their lives are and this gives you advice on like love, style, food, relationships and it's a really quick read. It has a lot of pictures and it's a very cute, very simple type of read that I feel like you can flip through and read whenever you want. You can read like a certain passage whenever you want so I really enjoy these types of books and they just bring me so much joy so I'm very excited to read this and Liam also gifted me this from my Amazon wish list so thank you so much Liam. <laughs> Thank you.
So I did finish How to Be Parisian Wherever You Are and I really enjoyed it. It wasn't offering me any new insight, but it was still an enjoyable and comforting read. It's just a read to pass the time and just enjoy yourself and that's what i was really looking forward to and i really enjoyed it and i thought the little tips that they gave and the little insights that they gave on how parisians live was really cool and i liked reading about their fashion tips and i thought it was a cute read that i will definitely put on a coffee table or something or like display on my shelf because i really do enjoy the cover of it with its simplicity. Then I started Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare and my best friend Camille got me this because I really want to try and read all of Shakespeare's plays and this is one that a lot of people talk about that I have not read before and one of the main characters is named Olivia so there we go. Basically the play's about me. And I don't really know what's happening so far. I'm only on act one, scene five. There's always shenanigans happening in Shakespeare in plays and I really enjoy it. And I'm not sure if it's because I haven't read Shakespeare in a while, but I'm really struggling to understand the dialogue. Usually when I get into a habit of reading a lot of Shakespearean plays, I can really understand it and it's very easy going for me to read his plays, but I have not read a Shakespearean play in a while. I think I read one in January. I really enjoyed that one. It was A Midsummer Night's Dream and I don't know if it's just my brain fog or if I'm just out of practice, but I am struggling a bit with understanding Twelfth Night, so I am taking notes to put into this play so I can better understand it. So I finally finished Twelfth Night and this took me the longest amount of time to read compared to all the other books that I have read for this reading vlog, mostly because I was not interested in the convoluted storyline that Shakespeare creates. Despite having a main character with my name, I just did not care about the play. And I just felt like the writing style was different from other comedies that he's written i feel like those are much more entertaining and this was very bogged down in a way that just took me a very long time to read i don't really know how to explain how i feel about it it's just i did not really enjoy it at all but i finally got to read twelfth night so i can say that i've read it and i did not really enjoy it compared to other shakespearean plays that i adore i feel like i would have liked Twelfth Night more if I had read it during high school or during college because I feel like if I had a professor or a teacher breaking down the story and just having us dissect it and look at it with a very close eye, I feel like I would have enjoyed the story more. I would have had to spend a longer amount of time with the text, so I feel like I did not get the full effect of Twelfth Night and I feel like it would have been better if I learned about it in school, but... I sadly did not have that opportunity and sadly none of my professors wanted to teach this play. So that's how I feel about that. So I finally finished the last two books that were on my TBR and it was Lon Chaney Speaks and The Forest of Wool and Steel. Lon Chaney Speaks is a graphic novel following the life of Lon Chaney and he was a very famous silent film star who utilized makeup to become different people and different creatures in movies. So he played the Phantom of the Opera, he played Frankenstein and a bunch of other characters as well. And while I did enjoy the art style that had a monochrome and vintage flair to it which reminded me kind of like 
Popeye in the way that Popeye is drawn. I didn't enjoy this graphic novel because it was so weirdly paced. And while I did enjoy the fact that this author spoke about the racism that was prevalent during this time period in old Hollywood and in the way that they portrayed different ethnicities in film, he didn't really call out the fact that Lon Chaney utilized makeup in order to portray different disabilities in a very negative light and i wish that the author would have called that out in the text like he did with the racism because i feel like that's very prevalent in this graphic novel and it was not called out so while i did enjoy the art style the art style didn't save this graphic novel for me and i feel like the issues that I had were really prevalent and I couldn't ignore them. So while I did not enjoy Lon Chaney Speaks, I did greatly enjoy The Forest of Wool and Steel. And this is a novel translated from Japanese following a man named Tamura who wants to become a piano tuner. He does not know a lot about the craft, but one day when he hears someone tuning a piano, his whole entire life has changed and he feels a calling towards this career. So we get to follow Tamura as he navigates his new career in a piano tuning and as he learns different techniques and lessons from his mentors who work at the same place as him. We also get to explore the way that music and piano playing really affects different people's lives in such great ways and how music can heal and help others through very difficult situations. I'm not a piano player at all. I don't know how to play the piano. I don't know how to play like any instrument I played like the recorder in third grade when we learned how to do that I don't know why they made us do that, but I am not musically inclined But I still greatly enjoyed this novel I just really like the exploration into piano playing and how it's so Effective and how it's so vital to people's lives. This novel was super atmospheric Gorgeously written and I feel like if you're looking for a low stakes novel where not a lot happens and it's a very slow moving and if you're looking for something that's atmospheric and just gorgeously written this is the novel for you and I really enjoyed it and I'm so glad that I picked it up. So this is the end of the vlog where I finally finished all the books on my TBR and I was able to read some of the shortest books that were on my shelves. This was such a great way to get myself to read more because I was in such a big reading slump throughout 2020 and I feel like I still am and I feel like this was a great way to get start my reading and really get myself out of that slump because it has been a a rough one. And let me know what other reading challenges I can do for reading vlogs because I really enjoy that aspect. I'm moving you over because the sun is in my eye. So I hope you all enjoyed this vlog and I hope you all have a wonderful day as well and I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye!